This portion of the program is brought to you by Sun Pet Products. Make every jump an odyssey. It's not summer anymore. I've been walking around in my Scarab TV shirt and my little hat, but I've had to, I've had to change into the, into the warmer weather. You can imagine what this is like in the summer though, can't you? This is how drop zones, I remember, used to be. Look at this bar, the rusty trombone zone. Bet there's some stories to be had here, eh? It's cold right now. Nobody's here just yet. The wind's picking up. It's gonna be a long day. Regan Tetlow, Sky TV. This landing area, it's quite tight. There's trees all the way around. Reminds me very much of where I started in the UK, up in the north of England. But the grass is gorgeous. Almost looks like a golf course. Welcome back, we're here at CPI. As we said, the weather's against us today. The competition skydiving has been cancelled. It's even starting to rain a little bit. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't really matter because I'm here with the legend himself, Mr. John Jeffries, father of Jack Jeffries. You know this drop zone. Tell us why you know this drop zone. How, how much do you about know about this place? Well, in 1970, when they opened it up full time, I happened to walk on the drop zone as an experienced jumper from somewhere else. And they needed jump masters, so I joined the club immediately and jumped here. My son Jack was four years old at the time, running around here in the cornfields and in what the barn that used to be over there. Yeah. It was a very tiny place. We just had one Cessna, a 172, and everything grew slowly from then. But Jack, uh, Jack grew up here and in 1982 when he turned 16. I trained him and his mother threw him out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. The rest is history. Are you still involved in this drop zone? Uh, only as an advisor uh, to help out when I can. I don't jump actively anymore. Yeah. I live too far away. Right. I've been to a lot of drop zones over the years. They all look very different in the good weather, don't they? I can imagine this place. Just behind us there, we're looking at this landing area. It's beautifully controlled it looks looks like a golf course well it's uh, it's part of the airport uh, airport land and as you can see they don't grow any corn here but where uh, back where it gets brown uh, they grow corn there during the year so if a, if a jumper lands over there he's in the corn it must breed some good canopy skills here it does uh, back when we only had round canopies uh, you had to spot really well it's a tight area isn't it it is so when was your last jump here uh, 2008, I came back to put out my best friend's ashes. Right. So I retrained. Right. Wow. Ellington, Connecticut. This is probably one of the longest surviving drop zones in the United States. I think 1962, it got going and here we are at the side of the fire pit. This weekend is all about celebrating skydiving, about the Skydive Museum, and of course the Skydiving Hall of Fame. A lot of the inductees from this year and many, many years previously have probably sat around this fire pit at some point. These stones can probably tell some stories. If we could get the information out of them, that would be for the Scadaver Museum. So while there's nobody around, I've sneaked behind the bar there's actually a keg here, some beer in there, you know. I was 14 years a barman before I went as a full-time skydiver. Is it too early for a drink? What time is it? It's got to be 5 p.m. somewhere, hasn't it? Regan Tetlow, bit thirsty, Skydive TV. <laughs> 